Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave. This video is one in a series we are releasing on Princess Cruise's newest fleet member, the Sun Princess. We recently tested, got to go to Northern Italy to the Fincantieri shipyard where they are building it. Uh, and we were there during a transition in its build. They had finished all the steel work in the dry dock and they were now floating it out of the dry dock to continue doing all the interior work on it. But just before they filled the dry dock, I got to walk the length of this ship underneath its waterline with Chief Engineer Gaetano and find out about all the different systems it is implementing to be efficient, to be energy saving, to be comfortable for the riders. And frankly, when you get to the end of this, the propellers are like two of the most beautiful objects themselves I have ever seen. Even if you don't think you're interested in cruise ships, <laughs> Watch this, this is a half an hour deep dive into some amazing, amazing scale engineering. Gitano, I, I don't even know where to start. There's so many things, they're so large, but since we're up at the bow, talk to me about this big nose of the ship. Yes, so this is a big nose. We call it the, the valve. It helps, opens up the water when the ship is moving into the water. So it's basically there to improve the hull efficiency. The hull efficiency, yes. so how much fuel it expends pushing through the water. Exactly. Okay. So it will reduce the drag through the water. How does it work? Its design is to generate waves. These waves, we basically are in counterface with the waves generated by the hull around the ship. So the normal wake that the ship makes, this helps make that wake smaller? Exactly. Wow. It's just like... By creating you, waves that are underwater. It's just like uh, noise uh, reduction for your... Uh, noise cancelling headphones. Noise cancelling. Yeah. This one is wave cancelling. Wow. If, if uh, the ship didn't have that, waves would be generating on the hull. So basically, the surface that the ship is in contact with the water increases. Gotcha, of course, because you have the... Exactly. I so see. because we have those waves around the, all around the edge of the ship. These noses generate a counter wave that brings nearly to zero or zero those waves. Wow. So when something like this gets built, is it... I see all these welded lines. Is this sheets of steel that are brought in here and welded in place? Exactly. So they are all, as you can see, uh, these are all specially cut in the factory. Yeah. Up here. And then attached to the structure inside and then welded. So the factory that, that cuts these also bends them to the curvature. Exactly. So everything's worked out way in advance. Yes. But that must mean that there's, that there's a place where these are being produced and then they're being delivered here. Is exactly. that, is, are these being produced here? Actually, this is built on the key side here. Okay, okay. So, and it's then, not too far. Not too far, yeah, meters away. And then move the air with the crane. Yeah. And then literally attach to the rest of the hull through that welding over there. Gotcha. I know it's noisy. That's because this puppy gets floated like tomorrow, right? Exactly. Tomorrow they fill this dry dock in this. Okay, so is this like one of the, is this a particularly large nose? This is the biggest I've ever seen it's in my a, career. It's the biggest I've ever imagined. Yeah. I've done uh, large ships, but this is really the largest ships ever built, ever built in Italy. And the first with the liquid natural gas. Oh, amazing. Yes. Okay, my next question is about these four ports. Can we head down there? Of course. Okay. Let's go. Okay, so these help the ship move side to side. Tell me about these motors. Yes. So. What are you looking at are the famous uh, thrusters. Thrusters, okay. The name comes from thrust. So it generates a side thrust for uh, two main reasons. One is when we dock, so when we are attached to the berth and we have to uh, come to the berth or leave the berth, yeah. they help the captain uh, leave the, the berth by basically from, from our perspective, we turn the thrusters on, so, and uh, those, they spin, but they don't create any thrust. So the captain from the bridge can change the pitch. The pitch is the way that... The, the propellers have adjustable pitch. Exactly. Oh, wow. 
is the way that the so their angle of attack the, on the, the water. blades yeah those are called the blades yeah so the blades can actually turn and increase or decrease the thrust that's an incredible amount of finesse that you can get i would imagine exactly so you can start all, all four of them, or as per his request. Yeah. We can use one, two, depends on the wind, the sea condition. If it's super calm, you might only need exactly. one. Exactly. Okay. The current, you might have a very super calm wind, but very strong current from the sea. So it depends on the forces from the nature. Right. We start one or more trusses to help the ship maneuvering. Of course, these are uh, very powerful. We talk about 5,000 horsepower each. 5,000 horsepower each, they're yes. electric? They are electric. Okay. Inside the ship, uh, we have an electric motor, yeah. which drives a shaft, which then, with the gear reduction system, turns the blades. Oh, okay, so the motor's inside and comes down and exactly. transmits the power. So, then we have a pitch control system, yeah. which is hydraulic and uh, can basically turn the orientation of, the, prope of the, the, the blades of the propeller. So those more pitch you give, more power is requested to the thrusters and more power is requested to the power plant, to the engines. God, oh right, of course. Yes. So you can dose the energy to move the ship uh, one side to another. Oh, amazing. Now I noticed that it also creates these four holes on either side of the hull. Does that, that has a, an effect on the ship's forward, uh, uh, on its, the hydrodynamics of it moving forward, It's it? true. So the drag that the tunnel creates, it's negligible. Oh, okay. But there is a drag. You are uh, very correct, Adam. Is this serviceable when it's at sea? Can you get can someone come down here and... It can be done. Wow. It's very difficult, but I've done it before with a team of... Uh, basically uh, professionals, they, they just do this kind of job. Oh, okay. But you only do that if you are really in an emergency or yeah. if you really need all thrusters to, to be operational. Yeah. Of course, having four thrusters, it gives you the backup. If one has a problem, you can use the other three. And yeah. uh, what, again, I think the ship I was on last year only had three thrusters. Yes. This is... This is a bigger ship, yeah, you yeah. need more. <laughs> so. The, the thruster power is designed by the windage of the ship. The windage right, right. is the area ah. which is subject to the wind. That acts like a it's sail. It's just like a sail. Right, right. Now, and I'm assuming that these four tubes are also built somewhere else here exactly. and brought over and... These are built in Norway. Oh, wow. Yes. They are very heavy piece of equipment. There is a special transportation to take them here to the shipyard. They are built with their own tunnel. As you might see there that welding. Yeah. And that is the piece of tunnel which comes with the thruster and is made of stainless steel. So special material oh, that doesn't wear. I see. And the use, you can see also those uh, piece of metal attached to the hull. Yes. Those are called sacrificial anodes. Right. So those are the parts that will wear instead of the blades. Those are to help uh, reduce the corrosion. Um, I'm looking at the, the alignment of the plates between the, the tunnel and the hull, and it's very close. Yes. So, so these tunnels are built in Norway. They come here. What happens if they're a little bit, I mean, every, nothing's perfect. Do you, are you building this like as they're arriving so you make sure that it all aligns or are you adjusting it to itself? No, it's already built from the factory that okay, way. Okay, okay. And uh, the most important things for the yard is to make sure that the, the blades are all aligned with each when, other. With each other when they are installed, to make sure they haven't the, the they hasn't been subject to any deformation. Right, with, right. There is a special welding procedure to that. So it's, there, mu there must be some yeah cranes to hold these in and bring them in. Exactly. Oh, just yeah. like <laughs> so. This again, this section is built on the pier. Ah and then brought into the yard with here. a crane. So it's an easier space where the people can work. Um, and yeah. I'm also assuming this has ballast tanks that can raise and lower it in the water because it has yeah. different depths that it goes at. Exactly, right? so the ballast is needed for ship stability. 
So you know, more weight you put on the bottom of something, more stable it becomes. Yeah. So this is very large vessel, but it's only deep eight meters into the water. Eight meters? Yes. 24 feet? 24 feet, exactly. That's and so small. Everything else is out. So we have over 50 meters above the So that's sea a lot line. of weight. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I have a question over here about yeah. the, um, here, over here. Can we walk yeah. over? Of course, yeah. I, I see these, right, these wedges, but then I see these shims. Oh, are these the wedges from the other side? Okay. So exactly. are you able to remove these sort of one at a time to make sure you're painting the whole ship? That's a, that's a weird question I had. This is something you can do. And the shipyard takes care of these calculations because, of course, you need enough to sustain the ship. Right. But that's something can be done. You are correct, Adam. Okay. Oh, good. And tomorrow, when they start to fill this with water, they're not do touching these at all. They're just letting the ship come up. Exactly. Once the ship is floating on himself, yeah. then dragged out with the tugboats. How long have you been working on this on this ship right so now? So it's already one year that yeah. I'm assigned to this project and has been fantastic because uh, it's a great engineering adventure for me. Sure. And uh, that is, uh, it's very exciting. Yeah. I would imagine that tomorrow when it rises ever so yeah. slightly, that's going to be a good feeling. Exactly. We'll see if the Archimed law works. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can we go down to the Course. to the stern? Yeah. Well, we, I just have to find the exact position okay. first. So apparently what we're about to see is what Catano just called an air lubrication system. I think I know what that means, and I think it's really cool. Okay. I love that we're, we're underneath a building. <laughs> okay, what, tell me what this is. So Adam, uh, here we are in front of one of the injection point for the air lubrication system. Air lubrication, I've never thought of air as a lubricant. Yeah, it works <laughs> in the water, so. Oh, the air, you inject air into the water. So, oh, of course, and that lowers the, the, the friction on the hull? Exactly, so what we do is inject air into the seawater so it creates uh, literally a carpet of bubble where, so we reduce the surface in which the water is in touch with the hull. Yeah. So it basically the effect is, as soon as we turn this on, is to reduce the shaft power and increase of speed. So we have two advantages, lower fuel consumption, but first of all, we reduce our carbon emission. Ah, because you're using less fuel. Because we are using less fuel, exactly. That is a little bit like, um like the, the, the bumps on a golf ball, creating a layer that allows the, the main object to slip through its liquid medium. It's exactly the same principle. Incredible, and there's 14 of these. Yes. Which means, is there, are there 14 compressors generating that air, or we, is there one system? We have seven compressors, which each and every one of them serves two air release units, they are okay. called. So it's an impressive system. And uh, we, have we are retrofitting also our existing ship with that to reduce our footprint, carbon oh, nice. footprint, yes. And right now we're underneath something as big as the Empire State Building in New York, and it's sitting exactly. on wooden blocks. <laughs> I'm just like letting that sink into my head. Yeah, there is a, a pretty big uh, ship above our heads and uh, a lot of steel, a lot of weight. <laughs> Wow, infrastructure. <laughs> what, 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 what is this? Adam, you look at the, our stabilizers. These are the, st they stick out. Yes, they okay. are simply wings. Wings? Wings, just like an aircraft. So they stick out yeah. only when we need them. Let's say when uh, we have a rough sea oh. to improve the comfort of the passenger. You don't want the, right. uh, Dishes to break in the galley. No, right. So it keeps the ship from tipping too much. Exactly. Now it's called the listing. Yeah. In 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 a sea verbiage, it's called the listing, and uh, this movements is yeah. called pitching, and this is 
rolling, let's say rolling, and right. if it is, the ship stays constantly to a side, is a list. So that's rolling, that's pitching. So this will reduce the roll and reduce the list of the ship. You said it's like an airplane wing. Does it have an airfoil shape to it? Exactly. And so underneath the water, it has the same dynamics. It can adjust the amount of pressure holding the ship down. So it has a sensor that senses the roll of the ship and counter-react that movement. So the wing simply moves, the stabilizer simply moves this way or this way. Okay. Just to counter-react. So one will move this way, one will move this way if the ship listed to ah, just this to, side. Right, right. To create this hydrodynamic effect that will force the ship to go upright again. Yeah. Is this uh, like the bubble system, a, 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 a separate system that gets brought and installed? Exactly. We can uh, basically, these are built in Italy by Fincantieri, another branch of Fincantieri. Okay. And uh, they are also tested in the factory. And then they simply come here with a piece of a hull and weld it Amazing. inside. They, are, they work with hydraulic force. That's what I was wondering. It looked like a hydraulic motor. Exactly. And in, in add-on on this uh, stabilizer compared to our previous vessels, we have an extra little flap on the edge uh -huh. that will improve even more the hydrodynamic effect, the lifting effect, just like an aircraft. Amazing. And when these stick out, they're, it, it, they don't stick out that far. Well, compared to the size of the ship, no, yeah. but they're quite large. Also remember, this will create a drag. Right. So it will make your ship less efficient, but more stable. Right. So the wing you said is quite, quite wide. So it's about seven meters long. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And uh, will be, it's large, like one and a half meter. Okay. So it's quite a big piece of equipment when you stick it out. Yeah. And these only come out at sea? Only at sea. Yeah. As you can see, as the wind improve increases, also the blades are increasing the speed. So, so it just gives you the idea of how well is engineered. Yeah. Yeah. Inside, there is almost no friction at all. No so, friction. It's yeah. blow. It's turning from the wind here, <laughs> which is also it's really windy. Yeah. Uh, these are made of bronze, am I right? So it's a special alloy. It's not just bronze. It has a nickel in it. It has aluminium. It, it's obviously it's an industrial secret. Yeah, the sure. material they use. But, but I notice it's not painted. No, it's never going to be painted because this is resistant to corrosion and erosion. Gotcha. So it's a special material. As you can see, each and every blade here is bolted to a hub. Yeah, yeah. And um, you can basically unbolt. If you have to change the blade, you unbolt it, put a new blade in. You can even do it underwater with the divers, a special thing. And this isn't an arrangement I've seen in pictures of cruise ship propellers. This looks, this looks new. This is something that is uh, very new to our operating line. What you see here is an electric motor which runs about 3,000 volts, 28,000 horsepower. 28,000 horsepower? Yes. And it can spin 360? And can turn 360 degrees, 360 degrees, as much as you want. So between that and between that and the thrusters up front, this thing is in, seems like it's incredibly maneuverable. Yes. So you can turn the azipods, that's how they're called, azipodal propulsion, to any position to help the ship turn on himself, leave the bird, or any other maneuvering. And of course, when we are sailing, they will be turned 90 degrees to the aft of the ship, to the stern. To the direction. To push the, the ship, uh, to propel the ship. And are these all sacrificial anodes bolted to the side? Yes. So those are help uh, to reduce the corrosion on the hull. And that's the corrosion caused, if I remember correctly, by the electricity generated by the reaction of the metal in the seawater. Yes. Is that right? When you have two different materials, you create the so-called galvanic corrosion from Mr. Galvani, yes. which 
basically the two different materials will create uh, differential in the potential. Got it. So voltage. So means literally material moves from one material to another. Oh, just it like electroplating. Exactly. I did not realize that that's what was happening. And those help yeah. offset that. They are called sacrificial because it's the weakest material. Right. It's the one that we lose is material. And we, we have no uh, technical problems with that. Right, right. We would have some if the hull will start to lose its bits and pieces. I notice it's only a few feet from the edge of the dock and the same at the other side. This is about a third of a kilometer. This one is exactly like you say, 345 meters. It's the biggest that the dock can handle. Right. It, it could handle maybe 348 meters. <laughs> Better don't try that. No. <laughs> It's an impressive piece of engineering. Really we can is. literally go inside, from the inside of the ship, go inside the electric motor to do inspections. Really? And yes. You, you climb down and into, wow. That's cool. Only if you are not claustrophobic. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That's really neat. I wanted to tell you also that we have a few more reasons why we choose the Azipods. Yeah. So one is hull efficiency. Normally with the Azipods you can shape the hull so it's about 10 to 14% more efficient than a traditional hull with the thrusters. Oh, because interesting. the same thrusters that you find on the bow, on a ship without Azipods, you will find them also on the stern. Because you also need a, a leverage point to push the ship away from the dock or to maneuver it. Gotcha. So, as you can see here, we have no tunnels with the transverse propeller, so right. we have no thrusters. Because, simply, you can turn the your main propeller and make him work like a thruster. So you have 50% uh, of your propulsion power use it to thrust the ship away from the dock. Now, I'm also noticing that when these things are in their forward position, the propeller's facing that way. Exactly. And in all the cruise ships and the ship propellers I've seen, it's usually facing that way. Yes, this is because efficiency. Really? Again, you can see the hull is literally pushing the water towards the propeller. Having a propeller hitting the water directly, it's much more efficient. Than at the back side of this whole exactly. arrangement. So ah. if you would have had the propeller this way, you would have had the motor against it. Yeah. So it can work, but a lot less efficient. That's, so it's pulling itself through the water. Exactly. So we have a pulling effect, not a pushing effect. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and that sound we're hearing, that's people pulling some of the blocks out from underneath the ship, is that right? Yeah, I, they will uh, want to reduce the amount of blocks for the floating and also make sure to inspect that area before we put the water. So when I was seeing all the little tie-down straps, are those to keep that wood from floating up when the ship gets buoyant? Exactly, wow. otherwise it will be dangerous. Right, you have uh, all that debris in the water. Yeah. It will float, all the, the water. They are so beautiful. I, I mean, just the, the lines, the pol well, I don't know, is that polishing lines from its exactly. treatment? So every few years, actually a few months, we even polish those into the water with divers. Oh, wow. We have a special procedure because by polishing them, we improve our propulsion efficiency, reducing the drag over the water. And so we reduce our fuel consumption and the emission. Incredible. So there are divers that go underneath. Yes. Yeah, and they, they are specialized to this job. Right, right, right. So they're probably doing that all the time for yeah, different ships. Exactly. I'm still wrapping my head around the fact that this will be underwater tomorrow. Indeed. <laughs> and this gate behind us yeah. will literally be, be opened. That's what will open. Once once the water reached the same level of the sea. As the outside. After this door. So once both levels are the same, will be open. Does it swing? It swings that it, way with the with tacks. So the door itself is almost a boat. Indeed, yes. <laughs> it's another amazing piece of engineering. Yeah. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time in dry docks, yes. and I, I never tire of it. I love it. 
it's amazing.